Hey everyone, welcome into the K0LWC Ham Shack. Today we're talking about digital modes and ham radio. Which ones should you care about and which ones can you maybe forget? Well, I have some radios right here that can do digital. I have my Azu FT1, which of course I use for uh, Fusion and C4FM. I have the Anytone 878 for DMR. And oh, as controversial as it gets here, folks. Oh my goodness, it's a hot spot. This is about the most controversial thing in my ham shack. Well, I do operate FT8, so maybe not the most controversial thing. Before we get into today's topic, I want to remind you, uh, my channel is supported by Ham Radio Prep. If you want to get your Ham Radio license or get an upgrade on your current license, I highly recommend you check out hamradioprep.com or download the Ham Radio Prep mobile app in the Android or iOS app store. It's what I use for studying and it's what I recommend you use as well. So let's start at a 50,000 foot level on this topic. Digital has expanded tremendously in the last 15 years. Hmm, why is that? Well, we know our RF spectrum is under incredible pressure. It's being bought up by telecom companies. The internet of things has exploded. And again, digital offers a lot of advantages over analog. One of which is it's a really efficient way to use the spectrum that we have. So we can cram more in because we're using narrower and narrower bandwidths on digital. So does this mean that it's also gonna impact amateur radio? Well, of course it already has. We have a plethora of digital modes on the airwaves and I believe that will continue to grow in the future. But I also wanna take this chance at a high level to just beat back one of the most common myths I hear over and over and over. And that is this. Digital sucks because it relies on the internet exclusively. That's just simply not true. It is the most propagated myth I see out there across the ham radio community. You still have distinct advantages in using a digital mode over an analog one, even with absolutely no internet linking whatsoever. So can we put that one to bed now? Now, those of you out there that know me personally know I have a very, very strong opinion on D-Star. Now, if you're not familiar with D-Star, D-Star is the oldest digital mode we have in ham radio. It stands for Digital Smart Technology in Amateur Radio. It was actually designed back in the 1990s by the Japanese Amateur Radio League, and it first debuted in the market in 2001. Um, other companies across the ham radio spectrum have adopted D-Star and included it in their radios. Uh, you'll find them in ICOM as well as in Kenwood radios. Now, I don't have a radio here to show you because I don't like D-Star, and here's why. Um, of all the digital modes, it is the oldest, it also has the worst voice quality. Uh, and that is because it uses a very, very old way of compressing audio. Uh, it just sounds not good. Um, there are so many better options, why would I wanna use D-Star? Number two, uh, I really do not like and think the registration process is the absolute worst thing I've ever seen implemented on the internet. It's the most confusing thing to register yourself with the D-Star network through a gateway. There's no like confirmations. You don't know where to register. There's not a single point to go to. Um, you know, digital in some ways all suffers from this, but D-Star is the absolute worst. So we're not gonna talk a ton about it. I think D-Star will not be the long-term answer for ham radio in the future. So if I were you, I'd just forget it. Now that brings us to DMR, or Digital Mobile Radio. And that's what I have my Anytone 878 here for, and I've been a DMR user for a really long time. In fact, I was on DMR probably back in about 2012, 2013, uh, on the DMR Mark network. And the reason that I even was able to do that was because of a company called Connect Systems. They're still around, and Connect Systems was one of the first to really spread like wildfire, where they had a Chinese manufacturer um, able to create a really actually good quality radio that kind of mimicked a Motorola handheld and sell it to ham radio operators here in the US. So that allowed me to get in with the CS700, I believe was the name of the radio. Um, you know, for a couple hundred bucks, I could get it and start playing around with DMR. Otherwise, I would have had to go to Motorola and spend six, seven, eight hundred, a thousand dollars to play around and see if I liked it. That is really what has allowed DMR to flourish, and that really is the secret sauce to DMR and their marketing strategy, and maybe their long-term viability. And that is cheap, cheap, cheap hardware. Uh, I mean, you can get a DMR radio for sixty bucks. You can get a hotspot for sixty, fifty. Uh, you can build it yourself on the cheap and be all in at about $100. I mean, compare that to say another digital mode like a P25 or Fusion, you can't get in that cheap. So again, DMR really focuses on its advantage on cheap hardware. Now, let's flip that over and talk about 
Yezu's option, which is C4FM System Fusion. Now, Yezu, you're gonna pay a little bit more money for the radio. You know, the cheapest radio might be in that low 100 range, $150, $175, all the way up to six, dollars $700 for the radio, but they've kind of taken a different look at it. And that is, they were actually in the build it and they will come strategy, meaning they were giving out uh, C4FM analog um, dual uh, keepable repeaters to clubs all over the United States the last how many years. You could get a ridiculous deal from Yezu on a digital slash analog repeater. And so what their thought was, if clubs put these repeaters on the air, people will then go out and buy the radios. Uh, the other distinct advantage that Yezu is bringing to the table is it is a closed system, it is only Yezu, but what that means is they can better control the experience and make it really, really simple. Now again, as ham radio operators, we may not like that. We like to experiment, toy with stuff, tinker, but with Yezu's system, because it is closed, it's fairly easy to use, not to mention program. Comparing DMR to C4FM or Yezu System Fusion is like a night and day difference. Yezu solution, incredibly easy, great audio quality. It just works and it's easy. DMR sounds equally great, can be extremely frustrating to use. There is a huge learning curve and it takes a lot of trial and error and also a lot of help from other hams in your community if you're lucky to have that. So those for me are the two leading horses in this race. But I also ask you that same question. Um, I polled all of you on YouTube, here are my subscribers, and here are the results. Now all of you felt that DMR in five years from now would be the one still left standing. But you can see, you all agree, it's the same two uh, horse race. It is Yezu System Fusion versus DMR. Uh, D-Star, forget about it, just, we should just scrap that. Don't be using D-Star. P25, there's a few systems, it's a closed Motorola thing. I don't think that's gonna be the answer. Uh, but there may be something unique on the horizon, but I don't know if it's ever gonna gain mass popularity, and that is M17. What is that? The M17 project is actually a true, true, true open source project to bring uh, open source digital to ham radio. I wrote an article about it last year. Some of you that uh, read my website may have uh, recall seeing the article. I think it's great. I'm, I'm all for a completely open source uh, digital system for ham radio. However, getting a company to adopt an open source system like that, like a Yezu and an ICOM, I just don't think it's gonna happen. It goes against their business model. So while I, I admire and I think that there's lots of smart people doing M17 right now, I just don't know if it'll ever become the mainstream thing. But again, I applaud everybody involved with M17. I think it's absolutely fantastic. So where does this leave us in five years from now? I agree with all of you. I think it's a two horse race. It is DMR versus Yezu System Fusion. Easy to use, more expensive to get into, cheaper to get into, it can be a major headache and you gotta learn a ton before you can really start using it efficiently. Who wins? I gotta give a nod to Yezu System Fusion and Yezu. I know it's a closed proprietary system, but I think that really, out of anybody, they have the best strategy to market right now in terms of bringing digital to ham radio. But there's one more foot that I wanna add in. I think the true answer is what you see going on with like the Skyhub Link system in Colorado, the like premier multi-protocol system in Colorado and throughout the United States where uh, the Skyhub Link system bridges together analog, C4FM digital from Yezu, DMR, and about every other mode or method you can think of of getting into a repeater system all into one big system. It's technology agnostic. It doesn't matter what you use. I think that's the true future of digital and ham radio, whether we come up with those solutions or by some grace of God, manufacturers get together and figure out how to do this or technology comes along and becomes so mainstream where again, it doesn't matter what you're using. Oh, by the way, the network also is open to these things because it shouldn't just only be repeaters. Um, I think that's really the future we're looking at is what these multi-protocol systems are already experimenting with with great success, which is bring what you got and get on the air and talk and it doesn't matter what the technology is. Tell me what you think though. Drop a comment down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you haven't and if you also, don't forget, subscribe and uh, I really wanna hear what you guys think about this topic because I think it's one that's gonna be impacting us for quite some time. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you again next time.